Hello, thank you for joining me on this very cold winter's day. It's about minus six degrees and I'm in Oslo, capital of Norway. I've never been here before. I've already found the, the tram lines. We're gonna go and see some more trams in today's video. We're gonna go to the Transport Museum and have a look at Oslo's transport through the ages. Soon as there, oh, there's a bus, but there doesn't seem to be any trams. What we're gonna do, we're gonna get on the Metro. We're gonna go to a stop, a few stops up, and hopefully there we should see a bit more in the way of transport. There's three types of trams in service in the city and typically none of which, oh, there's one over there, I can show you that one, built by CAF. There's 87 of these CAF trams, Spanish company CAF in the city. Um, there's also these older trams built by Duvarg. There's, I think there's 40 of them and there's 32 Alessandro Bero trams, which are quite similar to the trams Birmingham had on the middle of Metro. So. I think we'll finally the trams are coming into action. We're about to see this calf one, so I'm gonna let you watch that pass. So that's number 409. Over there is Duvarg tram 131. I won't wait for it to come along if he's moving forward now because there's lots of traffic. There's another CAF one coming around the corner. Anyway, what we're going to do, we're going to go down onto the metro. We're going to get a train to, a, to another stop, about three stops away. And from there, we should go and visit the Museum of Transport. Right, I'm going to watch this uh, Duvarg tram pass because he's coming literally now. So these are like the oldest and newest trams in service. I really like those, look at those, those uh, older trams. I'm gonna have to go and have a bash on them later. Those ones don't have a driver's cab at uh, each end. So I think at the Termini they go round a loop, but I'll perhaps explore the outer extremities of the tram network in another video. As said, we're going onto the Metro. So see that T you see, that's like the equivalent of the London Underground Roundel. I'm going down into Metro. What I've done, I've bought a 24 hour ticket, so I don't actually have to do anything other than literally go and get on. So I'm not gonna pronounce the name of the stop, but that's the name of the stop. Go down here and see what the Metro's like. And then we're going just three stops. The Metro, I think is, for the size of the city, it's a really big network. It's not a huge city, Oslo, but it has a pretty good Metro network. So we come into here. So you've got westbound and eastbound because it forms like a circle. And if you look there, I think that's like a bridge. You can hear the train, so I think the train's down there. Uh, so if I go down here, I should, I'll either catch this one or have to wait for the next one. So yeah, there's, there's no ticket barrier at all. It just says validate your ticket. I think any train will be okay for me. Um, there's not a train there quite yet. So here we are, we're coming down onto the platform. I've never seen this before. This is my first visit to Oslo. It's nice to get down from here out. The cold, oh, there goes the train. 3151, pull it out. Built by Siemens, I just read that. 3185. So I'm now gonna wait for my train to arrive. Here we are, I've arrived at Mayushtan, we're above ground. There's the tunnel just there. So most of this metro is above ground. There's a train just coming out now. So it's quite exciting. So if you go for a bash, you can, you'll can you see a lot of scenery. 3168 is coming in. 3119 coming in. There is a middle track in the middle. I'm gonna get out of the way so all the commuters can get on. I'll just show you a map of the metro. So we were, we were there and we've come to here, Mayushtan. I like the look of line five. You get on it and it goes right around like that and back. It reminds me a bit of Newcastle's Metro, although if you go on the Newcastle Metro, you don't actually repeat the same track. And a bit like if you go on the Circle Line in London, you know, if you went from Hammersmith all the way to Edgware Road, you'd go through Edgware Road twice. There's a curious looking 
bay platform there, which is only about the length of one carriage. I'd love to know what ever comes in and out of there. I can see the system. You can see that white line there. That's like um, the contacts. I think it's like it's a third rail, but not in the same sense of London Underground. So there goes another train, 3395. And then we've got, um, which one is it? 3166 departing on that side. Anyway, I have noticed um, a couple of things. We can see the station now. It says Oslo Transport Museum, so that's where we're going to go. Have a look at the station. It's an interesting layout. So it's kind of got a track in the middle, which is possibly for storing trains when they're not running. I'm not sure. Is that, that looks like a depot up there. We'll have to get a train that way and go and have a look. Anyway, let's get out of the station and we'll go and find the Transport Museum, which we've come to see. And then we should be able to see some other generations of Oslo's uh, trams and metro. Right, then we come to here. There's supposed to be trams here. From the research I've done, the way I'm going to find this place is by following a tram line that doesn't have any overhead wires. And I think I can see it just up here. So there's no ticket barriers there. It seems to be a thing then that they don't have ticket barriers, which um, if you want to go and watch trains is quite easy. There's another train just pulled in, which you can sort of see through. And you can see, I said it's minus six, so you can see they've had a lot of snow lately. It's all been shoveled up into big piles. Now, yes, there's that tram line. So over there is a tram line. We've not yet seen one of the Alessandro Bero trams. Oh, and up there, I don't know if the camera's picking it out, I can see a huge ski jump. I think that's possibly where they had a Winter Olympics once. That might have to be somewhere I go on another day. Anyway, I'm going to follow these mysterious tram lines which don't have any wires, and I think that'll take me to the Transport Museum. So I haven't come far, just been following this tram line. As you can see, it doesn't look for a used, and then here, goes to what appears to be an old tram shed. This is the Transport Museum. It says it's open from 11 till three o'clock. So I haven't got about an hour to look round. I think possibly the front door isn't here. You can see, look, there were more tram lines going out there. So I'm getting excited now. I wonder what I'm gonna find. So I think they can bring the trams in and out. If they wanted to, but I don't know how often they do. So I think, yeah, I'm gonna follow round to the back. And I think that's where the front door is gonna be. And that doesn't exactly make sense but it seems the public entrance is round there. See, it's been Christmas recently, a load of uh, discarded Christmas trees. So I'm gonna go down there, past the snow, and let's go and visit the Transport Museum. Well, here we are. We're inside the Oslo Transport Museum. As you can see, there's some trams, horse-drawn trams, lots of electric trams. As I look around, I think there's a few buses looking. Looks like over there, the metro train, we're gonna have a look at that. And uh, various other trains. See this one, look, all these skis, it looks really funny. So it must've gone up into the hills, taking people going skiing. Look at this weird vehicle, snowplow. Cause as we know, you only got to look outside, there's a lot of snow here. So let's have a look around. You can go in most of the trams and the trains and the buses. We won't go in all of them, but we'll have a look in some of them. Some of them seem to have found other uses. Like this, like this one, they have meetings in here, so possibly they have meetings in that one. Others are preserved as you know, they would have been. So it's really, well, it's really nice you can. A lot of these places you come to, and you can't actually go inside. You just have a look at them. So you've got this really nice, really nice, cute little tram here. Each one, it tells you in English, and in Norwegian, I know the camera's showing the borders blank, but there's writing on it. This is known as a matchbox tram, and it was built in 18, 1897, so quite old. Let's have a look inside. So yeah, it's your typical little wooden tram. So we can see inside each one of them. And then, as I said, we have the smallest tram, seems to be that horse-drawn tram there. That really is tiny. And then this one here, this electric one's quite a lot bigger. See inside. Can't go in the whole strong tram, but you can, apart from my direction, you can sort of see inside. You can see where they would have gone. As I say, I'm not really going to try and pronounce the Norwegian place name. So that vehicle's interesting. It's got kind of low doors, but then 
quite high up bogey. So if you go inside, this is known as a Viking. You can go in, look, you've got these nice seats up here. I think I'd quite enjoy a trip around Oslo in this. The one next door looks like it's used a bit of a workshop. I can just see circular saw in there. So as I said, not all of them are you know, preserved as they were. They've found other uses, which in a way is quite nice as well. So some of, it seems a lot of them are blue. You get some green ones. These possibly worked outer routes, maybe, because sometimes you find with these older cities, they have more than one transport company running the trams. In the city is another blue one there. And, um, you know, so you get different trams running in different parts of the city. Ah, see that there, number 13. Yeah, I want to go there. That's probably going to be another video. Something interesting there, but that's for another video. Well, this is nice. It's been a much more modern tram now, but still, vintage. Sit down in here and, oh, nice comfortable seats. I've, so I haven't actually been on a tram in Oslo, as I say this. So they might be really comfortable. I expect those Duvarg trams are. Really looking forward to doing some tram bashing later. But I thought I ought to come here now because the museum closes. And I think it's open Sunday to Tuesday, or Saturday to Tuesday, and today's Monday. So if I didn't come here tomorrow, of course there's other places I want to visit, so I thought I'd come here. See these similar looking vehicles, two trams parked together. A bit like how you get in Eastern Europe with the Tartra trams. They, you get two vehicles coupled together. It looks like, it's interesting, they have a conductor who would sit here. It's certainly not a driver's seat. Yeah, because it looks like they're the prices of um, tickets. So a conductor would have sat there and the driver would have been up here at the front. Let's see what else we can find. That one's got nice seats. Go in there. There's this vehicle. You can see the writing. And it feels funny just hopping on and off all these trams. I could spend all day, you know, just being just great. I paid um paid to come in here and I can just spend all afternoon hopping on and off all these vintage buses and trams. It's just like yeah, great fun. All sorts of oh look, there's route numbers, destination boards that are put on the older trams. We go to here. I really want to go in this one, number two, three, four. Can we go in this one? Oh yeah. It was actually it's the trailer I wanted to go in. This is two, three, four. So as you can see, they only have doors on one side. And I noticed this with the Duvard trams. The newer trams in Oslo, the Caf and the Asandra Bera trams, have driver at each end. The good thing, as can be demonstrated here, with doors on one side, you've got all that space for seats, which when you've got doors on both sides, you lose space. It just means you need a loop at the end of each each route. This is what I wanted to go in this one. This is nice. Look at this. Nice, um, like the moquettes on the seats. Bit comfortable. Yeah, it's quite comfortable as well. Reminds me a bit of how Pacers were when they were new UK Pacers. Oh, and then the tram next to us. It looks quite posh inside. This green one, number 96. Admittedly, I, I don't know the history of every tram. Uh, but what they do give you when you come in, which is very useful, is a guide and in it there's a map and it does tell you about every single tram this is yeah, right. so when you come here you do get to find out a bit more about each tram but i just like sort of looking in them and admiring these very old trams and some of them that are not so old these are definitely the older ones so these are old little four-wheel trams it's in here Ooh. oh it's like a museum so there's a model, because we were up so close, couldn't really see, but we've just been in some trams a bit like that. So you can get an idea of some of the older trams. I think possibly they're getting newer and newer. This funny vehicle here, if you look, it's got a rather streamlined back to it. See how it's quite streamlined back. The real one's out there. I think we've been in that one. And then that's also a much older one. We'll go outside and find that one with the streamlined back. Yeah, that second to last one. I think it's possibly one of these. Let's go have a look at that streamline one. I might look at that. But as I said, I could just spend all day walking around. It's nice it's in a genuine tram shed. There are some buses as well. Because sometimes with these transport museums, they're in modern buildings, but it just feels all... Also, obviously you can't smell it, but it's got that lovely bus stroke tram museum smell. 
Yeah, see what I mean about the streamlineness of that the end of that tram. That's pretty cool. So that's the back though. And then here we have a bus with a bicycle on the front. Interestingly, it's also right and drive. I wonder why that is. Let's look in this bus. I'm going in the back door. Oh, this is a posh bus. This one's right hand drive as well. Anyone knows why these buses are right hand drive? Please do comment and tell me. I do like it though. Maybe they can't have come from the UK, surely. That's a mystery to me. Oh, look, that bus is a trolley bus, that one there. I'm gonna do now, let's, uh, let's go down here. And then we'll have a look at the Metro car, which we saw at the beginning. We'll walk down to the other end of the museum. Another big tram here. This one's interesting, it's got very different colors. It's red and blue and dark blue and white and gray, maybe that's an undercoat. There's another one of those streamlined tram backs with skis on the back, which is quite cool. This is that big thing, the Viking. Yeah, that's, that's white and gray, so maybe that was a livery. I really like this one, this green one. I think it's my favorite one here on 32. And then we'll go around here, walking down between two trams. And up here, we should find that Metro vehicle I wanted to show you. Oh, as I said about the Al, no, I was gonna say it's an Al Sandro Barrow tram, but it's not. That's one of the, a model of one of the Duvarg trams. And there's a, a nice model there of trolleybus. And here, well, firstly, that's how big Pantograph actually is. It's bigger than me. There's a Metro train there. So we're gonna have a look in that. So that probably was in service until more recently on the Oslo Metro. There's an old ticket machine. So they've preserved everything. It's not just about, you know, preserving the trams and the buses themselves. There's a signaling switchboard there, I think. All the everything that goes with them. I'm really excited about going in here and having a look. So this is number 1089. Is that even, that even looks like part of a ticket barrier there. I can't ever imagine seeing our cubic ticket barriers we get in London to preserve the museum. Oh, let's board this train. And, oh, yeah, I like this. Oh, it's got like an offset cab. I would have loved this. So look, the driver would sit there and you could sit here and I'd be sat there, turned round, getting the driver's eye view of the line. It's massive in here. They must, I think they are standard gauge, but I think they've made extra use of the loading gauge because it is, it's pretty huge. Look, the amount of people you could get in there, thinking how small like the London tube train is compared to this. We step off here and uh, we're right on the edge of the, the depot, as I said. Snow on the ground outside. There's an older looking train here. Another electric rail car. Look at that. Really like that. Let's have a look inside. Oh, let's just see what's down here. That looks like a works tram. I think that was that one that was different colours. Oh, and then look, here's like a signalling switchboard. Um, I'm not sure if that's for the metro or what that's for. So, yeah, bus, more buses, a coach there. Let's kind of look in 405. I'm sure we will be able to, because that looks exciting. Oh, yeah, so this is, um, this is, it's got, yes, it's got driver's cab with an, an offset cab at each end. So when this was a little rail car that went up into the mountains, I have to find out. Admittedly, I've literally been in Norway a few hours, and here I am. I'm at a transport museum. I flew to Norway this morning. I took the train from the airport, which was a very scenic journey. There was less and less snow as we came down into the city centre, but there seems to be a bit more snow here. Ah, talking of snow, quite fun to go tobogganing. Maybe not on toboggan quite this old. And there's some old skis. And look at this, this railway vehicle. This must have gone up into the mountains. Oh, look at that. It's just such a nice contrast looking down through there of all these different fronts of vehicles. That is really nice, nice old wooden wooden train. Let's go and have a look inside. And yeah, so I would have, if I'd been traveling, I'd have been stood here. Cause you've got your little driver's cab there. Have a look. Driver's cab is there offset. We go into here. It's got those seats where I think, yeah, you can turn the direction so that you can always face in the direction of travel. You get these people who don't like going backwards. I was just seeing the little Ashtrays, you know, like so everyone would have sat here smoking their cigarettes and there's even an old, I don't know how long that's been in there, but there's 
an old cigar in there that could have been in there for 50 or more years. We go into here, oh, interestingly, there's no ashtrays in this one. So that, I'm gonna take a guess. I reckon that probably says smoking. I wonder if that says smoking or no smoking. But, yeah, look, I reckon that word looks a bit like smoking. Maybe this is the smoking saloon. I think that's the conclusion I come to. And this is the non-smoking saloon. If you know, have I just randomly guessed a Norwegian word as smoking? Please comment and tell me. I think we've pretty much seen everything now. It is funny, you look out there, just see buses and trams everywhere. Like I say, I could spend all day in here, but I just had about an hour. But then it's still daylight outside and there's um, a whole network to, um, yeah, to, uh, I think that's the man telling me the museum's closed, so I'd better get out of here. There's a whole network to explore. So um, I think it's time for me to go and just show you this one last old bus. So hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching and from the Oslo Transport Museum, goodbye.